My introduction to Porsches came when I was around 10 years old. My friend's dad had just bought a 911, and it was amazing. It was fast and seemed so advanced, but it confused the hell out of me. It had nothing to do with the car itself, but because my friend's dad never just called it the 911. He always called it the 996. I genuinely wasn't sure what the car was actually called. Is it a Porsche 996? Or is it a Porsche 911? And then I learnt about the Boxster. But that too wasn't just a Boxster. It was a 986 Boxster. Around a month ago, Porsche unveiled their latest and greatest 911. And of course, it's not just called a 911, it's the 992 911. So, what on earth are these three digit numbers that precede so many Porsche models? Well, I'm going to get straight to it. To answer the question quickly, they're the internal project codes for when the car is being developed. In other words, it's what the car is referred to behind closed doors. The idea being that whilst the car is being developed, it makes sense to have an often discreet, but easy to distinguish name to help differentiate it from any other car the company has produced. Here's an example. Hello Gerda, what projects are you working on today? Hello Wolfgang, I'm working on project 996 today. What about you? I am working on project 987 today. Good, yeah. But without project codes, that conversation may go a little something like this. Hello Gerda, what project are you working on today? Hello Wolfgang, I'm working on the 911. What about you? Hmm, I am working on the Boxster today. Hmm, we are both confused. Yeah. Project codes are used widely in pretty much all industries. Microsoft's Xbox One was called Project Durango, and the new iPhone XS was codenamed D32. But what makes Porsche's codenames so interesting is that unlike with so many other manufacturers, Porsche has used the same succession of project codes since literally the beginning. In 1898, Ferdinand Porsche designed the very first Porsche, and incredibly it was an all-electric powered car and it was assigned project code 1. And from there, near enough every time Porsche undertook a new project, the next number was selected as the project code. In 1932, project number 22 was an assortment of Auto Union Grand Prix cars. In 1938, project 101 was a prototype tank that was beaten into production by the famous Herschel Tiger. And in 1945, Project 313 was a diesel tractor, over 30,000 of which were produced as it became the People's Tractor and played an important part in Germany's post-war recovery. This logical succession of numbers carried on for decades into the creation of sports cars and is the reason why almost all pre-1996 Porsches have their names. For example, the Porsche 356, the company's first ever sports car was named so simply because it was project number 356. Race cars followed this naming process too. The legendary Porsche 718 was named because it was project number 718. In fact, about the only car for many years whose name was actively chosen, rather than being decided upon by the fate of the project number, was the 911. In terms of project numbers, Porsche were on their way through the 800s in the early 60s. However, when in 1963 they realised that they were onto something a bit special, they decided that the car deserved to have a cleaner number, something to separate it from the others, particularly the 356, which in some ways it was replacing. So they skipped a load of project numbers and landed on 901, not 911. A new century of project numbers for a new era. But Peugeot weren't happy about this, and they filed a dispute claiming that they owned the rights to all cars named with three numbers with a zero in the middle. Seriously. And if Porsche wanted to sell their car in France, it needed a different name. So Porsche decided to change the name of their car, and for consistency's sake, they chose to make the change worldwide. But they had already produced hundreds of gold emblems in the shapes of nines, zeros and ones. So rather than throw them out, they simply swapped out the zeros for ones, 
and that's why the 911 name was chosen. But it does beg the question, why didn't they just call the car the 910 to save wasting all those gold zeros? Anyway, onwards. So from there, Porsche carried on with their successive use of project numbers, and cars such as the Porsche 924 and 928 were again sold under the same designation as their project codes. Later 911s were given their own internal project codes as well, as once Porsche began making multiple generations of the same car, it was even more important to be able to differentiate them. An example of this is the 964 911, unveiled a couple of years before the Porsche 968. So hopefully at this point things seem fairly clear and logical now, and it would have been so great if Porsche had been able to leave the project numbers as a lovely, simple indicator of whenabouts the cars were made, but in my opinion, they messed up. Porsche burned through the 900s with relative short-sightedness, using up what now must seem like precious project codes on small things such as transmissions and prototypes that would never see the light of day. They even used extra project numbers for different hand drive cars. For example, the left hand drive 944 is project number 944, but the right hand drive Porsche 944 is project number 945. Therefore, by 2004, Porsche were already unveiling project number 997, the sixth generation 911. Porsche were in a bit of a predicament. Logic suggests they could carry on using successive project numbers, break 1000 and maintain a chronological order to their production codes. But the 900 numbers had almost become synonymous with Porsche given the huge amount of success both on the road and track that the company had seen in the last century of projects. To leave the 900s behind would mean to shirk the excellent heritage they had worked so hard to procure. So Porsche began to double back. The Cayman and the second generation Boxster unveiled in 2005 had the project number 987. The previous generation Boxster, unveiled in 1996, had been in development for many years, so its 986 project code was most likely chronological. But the second generation car, being just one project number up, certainly was not. The seventh generation 911 was given the project code 991, six numbers lower than the previous generation 911. These cars' project codes most likely took the place of relatively unknown or mothballed previous projects that had been assigned the type number years beforehand. For example, the multiple Le Mans winning 919 race car took the project code and therefore name of a 1969 prototype transmission. What this all means is in the future we get to see more Porsches with monikers beginning with the number 9 and hopefully get to feel a little bit of past glory when we do. But I fear it's at the expense of being able to simply and logically account for all the wonderful creations made by this company, which is a shame and I think could prove a real problem in the future. And do I believe that the gentleman who back in 1898 saw the future and created project number one would want his company to get all the way to project number 997 only to stall simply for the sake of nostalgia? I don't. <laughs>